Hello everyone, welcome to the next in our series of Church at Home videos for St Luke's and St Paul's. We're going to be continuing to use our green books, so hopefully you've got a copy of that. I delivered uh, copies with the latest set of DVDs. Uh, if you'd like a copy at home and you're watching online, do let me know and I will uh, deliver one through your front door for you. We're going to be continuing today to look at our series on the virus and how we respond as a church. And our topic is going to be loneliness. And if you want to get your Bibles ready, our reading will be from Luke chapter 2. But let's begin. The Lord be with you and also with you. So we're going to sing our first hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King.
So if we now turn back to our liturgy, let's say our prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we'll move into our time of confession. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. So as is our usual custom, let's just take a time to let God speak to us in the silence before we say our confession. And so we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to move from confession now into a time of celebration. So let's say the words of the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We're now going to have our reading and our sermon. So I hope you're all sitting comfortably and you've got a cup of tea ready. Good morning. This morning's reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 22. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose 
was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as their chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today we are looking at loneliness. And the first thing I need to do is apologise because everything else I've pre-recorded today, I've been saying that our reading's from Luke chapter 2. It's not. It's from Ephesians. So thank you for that reading and for getting the right reading because uh, I've just... I don't know what my brain was thinking, if I'm honest. But we are looking, for, looking at loneliness, and I think loneliness is possibly one of the hardest things about the virus um, and how it has affected all of us. Um, it's very difficult, isn't it, to be alone? And I want to look at it um, in terms of how do we respond to the challenges of loneliness as Christians, but also as a church united together. Um, but... I don't know why, there's a Celine Dion song um, called All By Myself, um, and that sprang straight to my mind when I was thinking about loneliness. Um, but I don't know why, because there's something wrong in my mind, because whenever I get to that really high note at the end of uh, All By Myself, um, I want to break into You Chose the Cross by Martin Lazelle. And I don't know what's happened in my mind to link those two together, um, but it has. And there, there is no rhyme or reason to it. Um, but being all by ourselves, as that Celine Dion song says, is so tough, isn't it, and difficult. Um, because it's isolation, and dealing with isolation is so hard and painful for us all. And actually, um, isolation is often used as a form of punishment, isn't it? Um, if you're, I don't know actually if it's still a practice now, but if you're in jail, um, that's always portrayed as being the worst, is you get put into isolation. Um, but actually, as a child, I remember that my mum and my dad used to use isolation as a punishment for me and my brother, um, with differing effects, actually, because what would happen if we misbehaved, we would get sent to our rooms. And... Uh, uh, for my brother, it was the worst punishment ever. He could not stand it. He did, did, did not cope. Um, whereas for me, if you sent me to my room, it just meant I'd just go and play with my Lego for a bit. So actually, it didn't work. But um, isolation is used as a punishment because it hurts. It's painful. It is difficult. Um, and it has been one of the biggest challenges of COVID, um, other than or the obvious, which is illness and death. Um, and actually, isolation has now been recognised in itself as a killer, um, because people are sadly dying because of loneliness and the effects that it has on our mental health and then our physical health. And the truth of it is, as human beings, we are not designed to be alone. We are not designed to be isolated. And that's why it is such a challenge. When I first started thinking about this topic, um, I immediately went to um, uh, something called Myers-Briggs, which is a psychological study um, or a way of understanding people and their personalities. Um, and one of the measures Myers-Briggs uses is to establish as a person where, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. Um, and actually, it doesn't teach that you're one or the other. Actually, it's, it teaches that it's a scale and you tend to lie somewhere in between the two. Um, but whether you're an introvert or an extrovert isn't about how you are in terms of being a social person. It's all about where you get your energy from. Do you find being in a social situation tiring or do you actually find it energising? Me personally, I know I'm an introvert. When I go into social situations, I find it 
an effort, um, which means I have to rest afterwards. Um, whereas others who are extroverts actually find it energizing to be in a social situation. Um, and if without that, they, they, be, they become tired be, through being lonely or isolated. Uh, interestingly, Myers-Briggs was one of the things that Kathy and I did when we were first married. Um, we did it as a church in Shrewsbury, and it was a very interesting exercise because me and Kathy came out as complete opposites on the Myers-Briggs assessments, um, which we found hilarious, especially as we were picked on all the way through the day, which were uh, the day conference, because they used us as an example of how different people respond differently to different things. So whereas I'm an introvert, Cathy is definitely an extrovert. Um, and actually the same for me and my brother, whereas I'm an introvert and can cope with being sent to my room because I will just play with Lego, my brother just falls apart because that idea of separation really hurts him. But, actually, isolation for whether you're introverted or extroverted um, isn't healthy because even the introverts, after a while, need social interaction, need other people because there's only so much of your own thoughts you can cope with um, before you just escalate into madness, so to speak, but not necessarily. Um, because when I look at this, I think... Um, that we are humans, are sociable creatures. We need other people. That's why we marry. Um, that's why we go around in groups. That's why we have a church. We are social creatures. Um, and it would be wrong not to think about isolation in terms of theology and what the Bible has to teach us and tell us about being sociable. Well, when I thought and think about this, I've just said that we are, human, as humans, sociable creatures. Well, I believe we get our human nature from God because we are made in God's image. And if, as humans, we are sociable creatures, that means God himself must be a sociable creature. And actually, when you think about things, that must be true because God, he himself, is Trinity. God has himself in the mystery that is Trinity and Trinity theology. He has himself to talk to in that. He is three and one. Um, and I'm not going to mess with my mind right now to talk about Trinity and all that stuff. But he himself is sociable because he is three and one at the same time. But he made us in his image to be sociable, probably because he wanted us to interact with. God created the world and humanity, not necessarily to say he was lonely, but because he wanted to be sociable. He wanted us to interact with him, to pray and be there and be in a relationship with him. That is him as a God. But there are other areas in the Bible where I think we can learn from isolation. And the example that came to my mind was Paul, um, which is why we've got a reading from Ephesians. Because Paul himself went through some really quite severe times of isolation. Um, he was put in prison for his faith. He was punished and put in jail, like I said earlier, probably in isolation, because he stood up for what he believed. Paul knew what it was like to be alone. He knew what it was like to stand as a Christian when all the world around him was against him. But he didn't change. He didn't change his message. He actually stood firm on what he believed and preached the gospel. Isolation is tough and isolation is real, but we are all going to experience it. And our reading from Ephesians, not Luke, who knows what I was thinking earlier? But our reading from Ephesians tells us that actually, as Christians, we are never alone because we are united in our faith. Now, Paul is trying to settle an argument in Ephesians between those who are circumcised and non-circumcised and saying we are united. But actually, that conclusion of being united in faith is same for us here and teaches us that we are united as a church we are united together we are united into Christ we are part of him and his life and his salvation just as he is part of the of God in Trinity we are part of him 
it's complicated and it can uh, confuse us at times, but actually sometimes we just need to trust it. We are united, which means we are not alone. We are united with God and therefore with each other. Even if there is not somebody in the church stood next to me, which they are not right now, I'm stood in an empty building, I know that I am united through my faith in Christ with all of you. All of you watching this video, we are united together through our faith. That's what our reading here in Ephesians 2 is telling us. We are one church together, not just St. Luke's or St. Paul's, but the Church of England, the church of the whole world. We are united through our faith in Christ. One church together. So as Christians, what is our response to isolation? How do we respond to what is abundantly around us right now and is so difficult? Well, the first thing I want to say is we need to remember that commandment of love one another. Love your neighbour. And actually, we are keeping apart because of our love for each other. And that sounds counterintuitive, but because of the situation we are in with a virus that is at times deadly, we must stay apart to protect one another. We are loving each other through our physical isolation. And it's harder on some than others, but we need to do it together. And it needs to be a corporate effort, doesn't it? It's, there is no point in half the population isolating and the other half, not because then it won't work. Our corporate response to the virus needs to be a united one of isolation, and it will keep it away. That's what we need to do, because we love one another. But we need to hang on and embrace our unity and our spiritual unity. Because even if our isolation is physical, which we feel, we are all feeling, spiritually we are united. Feeling the presence of God with us. We need to spend time in prayer and worship because the more we do that, we, the more we sense God's presence. If we are feeling lonely and isolated at home, then I encourage you to pray and worship because that will give you the sense of God with you and then that will actually push away that sense of isolation. Whether that is spending time in prayer or putting on worship music or listening to hymns or whatever you can do, do what brings you close to God. Feel his presence with you and you will recognise your unity with him and with each other. But also I encourage you again to support one another, ring each other up, be sociable in our distance. Just because we physically can't be in the same room as another person doesn't mean we can't be with them. When was the last time you spoke to? Ring them, find out how they are, see what's going on. Just talk. And if you want, pray together. Encourage each other. Be church together. Support one another. That's what we can do to do. And finally, we need to make an effort. And I've mentioned this before. As a church, we need to make effort to worship together. So whether it's engaging with these videos or joining in with the live stuff on a Sunday morning, engage and join in. But isolation is with us. Isolation is going to be with us for a while. I don't know how long for. But as Christians, we are not alone. Hold on to that truth and pray for one another and hang on to our faith that unites us in Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we are not alone. I thank you that you are with us because you unite us. Help us to feel your presence, Lord. Help us to recognise the power and abundance of your spirit in us. Lord, we ask that even though we are physically apart, you set your church on fire. So we are united and supported and loving one another and aware of your presence in us all. So Lord, I pray that you continue to bless us 
and help us to look forward through this time of isolation to that time when we will be united again with you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In response to what we've heard, let's say the words of the Creed together from our book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom shall have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So if you'd like to stay in an attitude of prayer, I'm going to hand over to Hazel, who's going to lead us in some intercessions. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, that in this time of separation, we can come together in prayer bringing you our problems and our joys. We thank you for the technology that helps people to work from home and stay safe. And yet we recognise the problems that come with working from home. The isolation and lack of camaraderie that we get in the workplace, the chats with our fellow workers and the involvement in one another's lives. Please come and fill those gaps with your love and show us how we can reach out to one another. And we pray for everyone who puts themselves at risk by going to work to serve us in so many ways. The NHS staff, carers, teachers, delivery drivers, postmen, refuse collectors, shop workers, to name but a few. Father, please help us to play our part in keeping these people safe and showing them how much we appreciate and value what they do. Thank you for the technology that enables so many children to carry on with their education. It's amazing what can be achieved, but we know that there are many children who haven't got access to what they need to take advantage of what's on offer. We pray that you will show those in authority the way forward so that all children can have equal opportunities to move forward in their education. We know that many children are struggling with the effects of not being able to go to school, from not being able to meet their friends, not getting enough exercise, not having their normal routine. And so we pray that you will help them all to enjoy what they can do at this difficult time. We thank you for the technology that enables us to meet as a church to worship you whilst our buildings are closed. We know that this situation is far from ideal and yet we are fortunate to have the means to gather remotely in various ways. Please help us to be aware of those people who would benefit from a phone call or a note to show that we're thinking about them and care about them, that we recognise their need for contact. Challenge us to meet those needs. 
So please be at work in us and through us as we wait for the time that we can celebrate your love for us together. We thank you for the technology that helps our health service in such amazing ways. For the successful rollout of the vaccines, for the doctors and the scientists who are working so hard to find ways to beat the virus. Please give them wisdom and understanding in their research. Release the resources they need and add your gift of healing to their efforts. Please give them your strength and compassion as they continue their vital work for us all. And finally, we pray for all who are sick, for all who are sad, for all who are worried and anxious. Please reach out with your healing, your comfort and your love to all who are in need. Give them hope and a new sense of peace. Amen. And now we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's service and I hope it's been a blessing to you. We're going to finish now with a prayer from the collect and also a blessing. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.